All right, Rochelle, I am locked in a battle, a VR battle here right now. Uh, this is uh, Arizona Sunshine, the most popular game on the Steam platform. You can see how I'm being tracked everywhere. I've got an uh, Oculus uh, HMV headset right now. Uh, Amimon provides this wireless set where I can walk around, and OptiTrack supplies these 20 motion capture sensors, which allow me to move and be tracked wherever we go. Now, this company is actually um, a U.S. company that was recently acquired. Here I am in the real world again. Uh, acquired by a Shenzhen-based company, Layered, so you can see the global appeal of gaming and the interest in these companies in investing worldwide. Now, I'm here at the Game Developers Conference. This is the largest game developer conference in the world. About 26,000 people are attending this conference, at least. That was the count last year. The official count hasn't come out yet. Uh, hundreds of uh, workshops going on. Gamers here meeting with uh, uh, people helping to get connections and hopefully expand their games to broader audiences. They've also taken some serious notes as the all, uh, they've actually gotten together for a whole day forum to talk about a sort of uh, a bullying going on online and being more inclusive as there has been a lot of, uh, uh, with the increasing connectivity, people tend to talk to each other more and that's always not so pleasant. So they're trying to figure out ways to sort of address those issues. Those, of course, are not too easy. And of course, while we have these huge displays, OptiTrack, for example, supplies the experiences uh, for uh, Disneyland uh, theme Star Wars experiences and Ghostbusters experiences. So you can see um, the massive setup that they have and how uh, theme parks are actually going more toward VR gaming. As you notice, when you go to all those rides like Harry Potter and Universal, all these things, they now bring in VR, which are essentially from the game world, because it's you know more cost effective and it takes less space while providing the same experience. Now, mobile gaming, of course, is one big thing that has been happening, <coughs> explosion this year. I'd like to bring in our guest right now to talk about this new trend, and this is Daniel Levitas. She is from App Annie. I'll take this off to look a little more serious here. <laughs> Thank you for that. And, uh, uh, your company actually uh, helps companies, app developers, monetize and also tracks the various charts and the rating, rankings of all the companies. Tell us right now, what are the most popular games uh, on your charts right now? So I think when we look right now, what's been fascinating is over the last three months or so, we've seen these multiplayer games sort of come to a new level. And what I mean by that is those that are into PC gaming know about these battle royale games where you work as a team, upwards of 100 people that descend on a spot and battle it out to last player standing. This is now transitioned to mobile. And so we started to see this first in China with PUBG, these player unknown battleground games. Um, and now what we're seeing is between titles like Fortnite and PUBG have come to mobile globally. Just in the last few days, probably not a coincidence that it was around GDC, where you're now taking these multiplayer, player versus player games to this smaller screen, but yet having a fantastic experience. And we're already seeing downloads surpassing 250 million on just iOS and Google Play globally alone. I mean, we're seeing big experiences like this and then a small screen and you've got the consoles too, but you find that they're all merging together. I mean, people playing different formats and continuing their games on, on um, the same game on different platforms. Well, I think to give some context, if you think about the relative size of these platforms and the money spent, because of the fact that smartphones are now in the hands of, you know, three and a half plus billion people, that alone increases just the sheer number of gamers. And so the spend on mobile games globally is about 2.3 times greater on mobile versus PC. If you compare it to console, mobile is about three and a half times larger than console spend. But I think when we look at the actual titles, you will see certain titles translate across screens. A lot of sporting titles, I think in terms of some, uh, some uh, multiplayer online games, they've, especially in Asia, have translated really well to mobile. But I think for hardcore gamers, they love their big screen. They love their immersive experience. We're not going to be doing quite that anytime soon in a really great way on mobile. So from my standpoint, mobile allows for you to sort of have that complimentary game time, maybe competing for, um, frankly, non-consumption of games when you're out and about. When you're home, chances are if you're a hardcore gamer, you're on your console or your PC, but mobile allows you to extend that gaming experience essentially to anywhere, anytime. And you just came out with a study. Uh, tell me about some of those interesting findings. Yeah, so one of the big things that we looked at specifically was around the overall spend. And so mobile games surpass PC and console games um, really back in like 2014, 2015 timeframe. And it continues to grow at a faster rate because of this install base and because of just the sheer number of genres. 
that, you know, you can, for example, a top game, which doesn't make necessarily a ton of money, but a top game that's played in many parts of the world are fidget spinner games, which kind of almost seems <laughs> not logical because it's not the same tactile experience as a real fidget spinner. Or casino games. These kind of games, casual games, can do really well, especially in the West, versus more serious games in APAC. And it's markets like Japan and China and South Korea where we see players uh, spending more per game and frankly playing more hardcore games on mobile than we tend to see in Western markets like US and Europe where we tend to see your Candy Crush sagas and your more casual games monetize incredibly effectively. And tell us about the breakdown of um, you know, all the apps. You know, How much is gaming uh, make up of yeah, so if you think about the overall spend on mobile apps last year, globally, all app stores um, spent on mobile, consumers spent about $86 billion um, on all apps, including games. Games make up about 80% of that, so it's pushing that $70 billion mark, which is just a in incredible amount of revenue coming from this smaller screen where you're talking about average game times that are just a few minutes versus console and PC, where you're talking about people typically gaming for tens if not, tens of minutes if not hours. And Asia compared to the US, uh, tell me about uh, the popularity. Is it more popular in Asia? So in general, we see Asia, Asian markets where gamers are, uh, there are more gamers and more spend on mobile devices than we see even in the West. And I think this has to do with the genres. So back to these MMOGs, which tend to um, be frankly better at in-app store, optim uh, sorry, in-app purchase monetization, so buying levels or gems or power and lives, um, and it monetizes incredibly well in part because of the genre. Um, and I think in many ways, when we look at where this is going, in APAC also has been an interesting market to watch, not just because consumers there spend a lot of time playing games on mobile, but we also see the publishers there get increasingly dominant on a global basis. Great. Thank you very much, Daniel Lidas. Thank you for joining us. Uh, back to you in the studio, Rochelle.